After that, the king slept with his fathers. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was also was Jehoiah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and break down the wall of Gath and the wall of Jabnet. The wall of Ashdod, the cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. And God helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gobal and the Mehudims. We'll just keep and go to verse 15. And made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the task and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones with all. And his name spread far and abroad, for he was marvelously held till he was strong. But when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest came in after him, and with him foster priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appertained not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense in unto the Lord, but to the priest the sons of Aaron that are consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary. For thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thy honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priest, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah the chief priest. And all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, he shall haste also to go out, because the Lord has smitten him. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a several house, being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of the Lord, and Josiah his son was over the king's house, judging the people of the land. Now the rest of the acts of Uzziah, first and last, did, that, did Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, write. So Uzziah slept with his fathers, and they buried him his father, in the field of the burial which belonged to the king. For they said, he is a leper, and Joseph and his son reigned in we are looking at present in spirit, present in spirit. We have just seen the story of King Uzziah. He was one of the good kings of Judah. He was one of the good kings of Judah. He reigned for 52 years. There's a record that says that maybe he reigned for 42 years. Basically because there was a time when he was not really, really reigning. It was his son, Jotham, that was over the king's house. At that time, he was leprous. But in total, anyway, he was king for 52 years. He was 62, 16, when he began to reign. He saw the Lord during the days of Zechariah. That priest that he seemed like, that he, he respected. King Uzziah saw the Lord during the days of Zechariah, who instructed him in the fair of God. So far as Uzziah made a point to seek God, God made him prosperous. As long as Uzziah was uh, taking God, God made him prosperous. 
it was the time of, of Prophet Zechariah, and, and, and most likely a godly prophet whom, whom uh, King Uzziah listened to. He was wonderfully intelligent. He was wonderfully intelligent. God marvelously helped him until he was strong. He was an innovative king. And Judah prospered. Judah prospered. The state of Judah prospered. What do we have in Second Chronicles? Second Chronicles 16:9. Second Chronicles 16:9 tells us something about those whose hearts are perfect towards God. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole heart to show Himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards Him. Hearing that was done quickly, therefore from hence what thou shalt have was. We're just picking the best particular point that those whose hearts are perfect towards God, God fishes them out to be strong on their behalf. And so for as long as King Uzziah was following the Lord, God made him to prosper. God made his state, Judah, to prosper. Everybody was enjoying during his time. God he defeated the Philistines and the Arabs through him. King Uzziah built strong and protected towers and reinforced Judah's military capacity. Hallelujah. He ordered skilled men to create mechanisms. He said he made engines. Engines. Where would you see engine in, in, in the Bible? You would only see engine in, in that story of. Second Chronicles 26 15. He ordered skilled men to create mechanisms to shoot arrows and large stones at enemies from the city walls. He was involved in large scale farming as well. The, the Bible says he, he, he loved the land, was involved in large scale farming. Today we talk about mechanized farming, you talk about uh, and some genetically modified crops, you know. He was involved in large scale farming, and the people enjoyed and prospered during his reign. The Ammonites paid tributes to King Uzziah, and his fame spread up to the border of Egypt. His fame and strength led him to become proud, and this led to his downfall. Uzziah was basically saying he was above the law. And at the particular point, that the priests are doing it that I cannot do. And so he stepped in, he stepped into the altar, he was going to perform the things that ordinarily you would expect the priest to do. But he was opposed by 80 courageous priests that were led by the, the, the high priest and Zalai. While he was raging, while he was raging, leprosy fell on him, leprosy fell on him, leprosy broke out on his forehead. He was chased out. He himself wanted to run away because he was a leper. Wanted to run away, and the prophets were chasing him out anyway. So he ran, and they kept him in a separate palace. Was he was not allowed to enter into the temple again. What are we looking at? We are looking at present in spirit. How do they relate? How do they relate with a, 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 a sermon of last song? Taking a connection very soon. At the time of his death, Prophet Isaiah was now the prophet. Prophet Isaiah was now the prophet. That's like 11, 10, 11 years after he became the cross. Prophet Isaiah was now the prophet there prophesying. King Isaiah was successful. He had made a system that was prospering the whole nation as it were. King Isaiah was so successful and proud. And he did not respect Isaiah. So by the time Prophet Isaiah, the, by the time of Prophet Isaiah, the focus was, of the populace was more on the government system than on God. He had made everything okay. There was defense, everything was fine military wise. As per food, there was food, everything was working well. Even the prophets were relaxed. They, they were, what I prophesying about the moment. There's food, there is uh, protection. The prophets were even enjoying provisions from the government. And then we have Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. 
Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. We sang a song during the interview. That was this song that was uh, broadcast to us during the interview. It's talking about the glory of God. And we saw the glory of God's dream and all that. Let us read Isaiah 6. Let us read Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. Um, we just have that length of, of, of Bible verses so that we will see what's going from here to where. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and a strain filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, with twin he covered his face, and with twin he covered his feet, and with twin he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king. The Lord of hosts, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a light pole in his hand, which he had taken from the tongue from with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this had touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said, I am sent me. The seraphim flew, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. From off the altar. God is just telling me now that to, to the glory of God, the altar was still intact. There was still live coal from the altar. Although maybe the people ministering around the altar, they had relaxed, but the altar was still filled with life. When the king died, God opened the eyes of prophet Isaiah to see the glory of God. He realized the state of the people, and most importantly, his own state, and how far he was away from God. How far he was away from God. Now let us move into New Testament. Let us move to, to Matthew or John. Which of you will read Matthew or John? Anyone? John. John. Okay, John 20, 28 to 29. John 20, 28 to 29. What do we have there? And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas was not there when Jesus appeared to the disciples and he told them later that we have seen the Lord is risen. He said, No, until I see him. Until I touch, check that pool, where he was pierced, check his palm and all that. And Jesus appeared again later, a week later. And, and, and Thomas cross checked truly. And then he said, My Lord and my God. And so Jesus responded, Because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So we're trying to tie the two together. Thomas, he had some reasonable faith based on the fact that he saw something. Based on the fact that he saw something. This faith is built on personal experiences. It's built on personal experiences. You've used the jack of your car to lift up the car and you've seen it work. And so when you're seeing a jack, you know that ah, an average jack should be able to lift up a car. Based on the experience that I have, based on what I have seen with the jack in my dad's car, with the jack that I have used to lift up car myself, this is another jack, it can work. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus however describes two groups of people, those who see and believe, and those who never, they never saw anything, and yet 
They believe they never see something and they believe they just base it on something that Thomas was in the group of the disciples and believed. But to not, to, to, to not join us, we are in another category. Because I've joined our current group of believers who have not seen but have come to believe the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I was not there 2,000 years ago, but I believe that Jesus rose from the dead. He died and he rose again. I believe, I believe, I believe. Thomas wanted to test, to confirm, and then go with that kind of reasonable faith. But if Jesus is not with you physically, would you still believe him? That's a question that, that uh, is coming to us right now. The moment King Uzziah died, remember we're talking about King Uzziah. The moment King Uzziah was removed in death, prophet Isaiah saw the Lord. He saw the real king. He said, I have seen the king. That's what he said. He said, I have seen the king, not, not King Uzziah. The new king. I have seen the king. Praise God. In, in verse 5, he said, Then said I, Woe is me. That's Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I'm not seeing King Uzziah now. I am seeing the Lord of hosts. My eyes have seen the king. After the resurrection of Jesus, it will appear and disappear again, appear again another day. And, and after the encounter with Thomas, it disappeared. And when, well, what happened to the faith of Peter, Peter and some of the other disciples? We are quickly looked at Thomas. Thomas said, I want to confirm. I want to confirm. I want to confirm. This is seven disciples. There were seven disciples. In John 21, 1 to 5. We read John 20. We saw what happened with Thomas. We saw these were the people who were there when Jesus appeared and, and they told Thomas later, and said, Thomas, see, we've seen the Lord, and Thomas did not believe. And Jesus came and proved to him and said, Yes, my Lord and my God. Then we get to John 21. John 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to disciples at the Sea of Tiberias and on this wise showed he himself. They were together, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go and fish you. But now what would they have been doing? If Jesus was with them, they would have been going with Jesus to preach the gospel. There would have been one miracle or the other. But as it were, Jesus was not present with them physically. He was not present with them physically. And so what did they do? He said, okay. Peter said, I go and fish. He said unto him, verse 3, we also go with him. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. They answered him, No. There was King Uzziah. King Uzziah was helping the government, helping the people, and people were focusing on this government system. And then King Uzziah died. That made Prophet Isaiah to realize. That there is the real God, the real King, the Lord of Jesus was physically. Jesus was with the disciples physically, and then he died. He resurrected, but he was not standing with them any longer. They were not walking any longer. He would just appear and then move on and disappear. And so there were long spells of time that he was not with them. I just decided. I go fishing, that's what I was doing. I go out fishing, and the six of us said, oh, we're going with you. But they caught nothing. They caught nothing. There are many side attractions in this world that can make people to think that the Lord is not with them. 
They went fishing all night and came back and caught nothing. So there are, there are distractions. There are distractions. You are on your way. You are on your way. And you find something quite nice and you decide to stay there. And you decide to stay there. God is just reminding me of, of Abraham. Of Abraham, who God had told to go to a particular place. And I have a feeling he must have told this dad. And they said, let's go together. And they stopped somewhere. They stopped somewhere and, and until his dad died. Before he remembered that but God had told me to, to get out of the country and move on. That you will find in, towards the end of Genesis 11 and Genesis 12 from verse 1. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto the land that I will show you. But towards the end of Genesis 11, they were traveling himself and his dad and a few other people like that. And they got to a particular land, they got to Haran, and they dwelt there. And the days of Terah were, were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. It was not until Terah died that Abraham realized, God has told me to do something. Praise the Lord. So he continued. The same, the same happened to Prophet Isaiah. Not until King Uzziah died that he could really realize that, oh, yes, yes. Almighty God. So how will that one relate to Thomas? How will that one relate to, to, to Peter? And how will that one relate to the the, the sound of last week? Uh, let's let's have a look at uh, Luke 13. All we have in Luke 13, 23 to 24. We're just trying to tie everything together now and wrap up. Look at him. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Jesus said, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. What do we have in John 6, 26, 27 to 29? John 6, 27 to 29. John 6, 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth but for that meat, meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father said. Then said he unto him, What shall we do, that we might walk the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he has sent. What is the work of God that we have to do? Believe on him Jesus, whom God sent. Praise the Lord. And then that takes us to Philippians 1 27. That takes us to Philippians 1 27. And so you have a situation, you have a situation where what you are focusing is not there. What you were focusing on happens to seem to have disappeared. What are you supposed to do? For, 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 for the people of Judah, King Uzziah died, but God helped, God helped Prophet Isaiah. He could see God. He could see the Lord. He was no longer distracted by focusing on, on King Uzziah, the system, was now able to see the Lord. For, the, for, 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 for Peter and, and for Thomas, Jesus had gone, so to speak, and their faith had dwindled. Their faith had dwindled instead. Philippians 1 27. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, 
the Eastern part of together for the faith of the gospel. Thank you so much. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else I am absent, it wouldn't matter. What I will always hear of your affairs is that you are standing fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the gospel, for, for the faith of the gospel, whether is there physically or not, remember he's present in spirit anyway. And so what you have to do is to continue in that faith. What I will hear of you, Paul was writing to the Philippians, I may hear of your affairs that you are standing fast in one spirit. Praise the Lord. Just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now even more in my absence. Philippians 2.12. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. When it appears as if God is not there, He's there. When it appears as if Jesus is not with you, He is with you. He said we should not fear. He said even if we are walking through water, it will, it will not allow the water to overflow us. If we are going through fire, it will not allow the fire to kindle against us. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they came out of the fire, they were not even smelling. Smoke. Their clothing was not burnt. They were not even smelling smoke at all. It was not as if, it was as if they were not ever in that in that plane. Praise God. We sang the song Trust and Obey. Trust and Obey. And God is telling us that He is present with us in spirit. He is present with us in spirit. Even though it appears as if situations have changed, what we were enjoying, we are no longer enjoying them. God is still with us. Hallelujah. I said much more now when it appears as if I am there. Hard to show the results of your salvation. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Much more. Have that inside of you. That's when you catch one can say again it says, only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. Whatever you talk about, whatever you say, how you talk about it. In whatever manner that you are presenting it, anybody that is here will know that you are a Christian who is exercising faith in the Lord. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of, of your affairs that ye stand fast in one spirit. Let it always be mentioned concerning you that this person is a faithful child of God. This person is a faithful Christian. Not minding the situation, whether it has gone up or gone down, whatever it is, be standing fast in the Lord. Do not let your faith shake because God is with you. Our God is in man, he is with us. Trust that the way God always is with you, even when you do not feel and do not think that that is the situation, he is with you. Praise the Lord. Let us bow down our hearts and this one. Let us bow down our hearts and this one. Check out those instances where you might have swayed, you might have been swayed because of certain things that are going through your mind. Is God really with me? Am I the one doing this thing alone? Maybe you are somehow confused. Trust God, remember His word. Behold, I am with you always. The old and with you all this is present with you. Is present with you. Is present with you. What is with you? Maybe it's removing that thing to Zion. It's removing that, that destruction. And you are expecting God to appear again. You are expecting Jesus to appear again as one. Fine. Walking along with you, walking miracles all the way, but somehow it does not appear like that. You are expecting God to show up for you in a particular fashion. In a particular fashion, but He's showing up for you in a different way. In a different way, you say, This is not God. This is not God. 
As we were going through some of the school, one example just came to my mind. Someone asking God for, 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 for a means of transport, and God just takes you to the place. And you say, God, you are not outside my dream. I was expecting that you would give me a car and give me a, a taxi ride to the place where I want to go to. The essential thing is that you have got to the place where you are going to. Whether it was through your own vehicle or through a taxi, or somebody just gave a lift to the God, has, God is answering you in a different fashion, quite different from the way that you were expecting that He would show up for you. That Lord will be with you. God is there with you. Acknowledge God and acknowledge God and flow with Him. The way a man that He wants you to operate might be different from the way that you are thinking that you will be operating. Oh, you are looking for, for, I don't know. You are looking for, you are looking for what? God told uh, uh, Timothy through the mount of Paul. He said, do the work of an evangelist. Do the work of an evangelist. Because he was writing to Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Timothy might say, I want to, I want to do this work and he will do the work of an evangelist. God is speaking to him, listen to him. He is present with you in spirit. The Lord is present with you in spirit. Release your mind, release yourself unto him. Hear him, hear him, follow his direction. The Holy Ghost is with you. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Whatever is blocking me from hearing from God Almighty, remove it and let me hear you clearly. Let me see you. Let me acknowledge that you are with me. Let me acknowledge that you are with me. The situations will be changing, the circumstances will be changing, but you are the same yesterday and today and forever. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah. We worship and adore you. So you will not give us comfort. Let me have very great power to continue with our pastors. We worship you. And quite just try this in the over the place your word. Try the remaining part of this month. Try the remaining part of this year and encourage us. Oh, yes, we are hearing results that, that reports that. The, 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 the coronavirus infection is going up again. Father, we know that you are with us. We know that you are with us in that in the region. We know that you are with us in this land. Father, please help us realize that. Help us hold on to you. Paul told those ones that were with him in the ship. He said, No one God has appeared to me through an angel, that no one that is here in this boat. Which means we'll die. No one will perish. Just make sure that you're in this book. And we are holding on to you. Keep us alive and well. Provide for us and we'll continue to praise and thank you. We we'll worship the Lord. I must do your will, Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I cannot read. As has been said before, we may set aside our times and offerings so we can feed them, give them, and put them into the church account. You have the account number, you have the account number there, you have the sort code there displayed for you. You can use your church ID number as reference, you can use today's date and uh, put offering there and put your initial by it as reference. So we we'll know that this is the, the this particular one is from so first. Let us pray. Oh God, our heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for all that you bless us with. I thank you for this time of offerings and tithes gathering. We pray, God, that as your children as uh, they are putting up a, a separate amount for for offering, uh, and they are paying their tithes. They are, they are, whatever it is that they are doing concerning obeying you in this in, in this matter, I pray, Lord, that you return unto them a hundredfold. Return unto them a hundredfold. Amen. Are they paying tithes? Open the windows of heaven and pour our blessings upon them that they will not have room enough to take the blessings. Make them channels of blessings. And they give me offerings, oh God, I pray that you will return unto them good measure, pressed and shaking their heads and running over. True men 
and even by yourself, O God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, mighty God, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, if you have any questions, don't forget to ask. It's time to close the service. It's time to close the service. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Has anybody been blessed? Oh, there was a question for Sunday school. Okay. Okay, we'll try and, and, and look up and try and answer the question on the Friday at 7 Okay. Okay. Um, let us begin to thank God. Let us begin to thank God for what He has uh, revealed unto us, for what He has taught us to learn. This morning, and for some, and for some, God has commanded it. It shows that we are commanding who God is. Go ahead and appreciate God now for the service. Go ahead and say thank you, my Father, for the connection, for the Wi Fi, for the internet connection that you have, for, for the broadcast team. Go ahead and thank God for that. Go ahead and thank God. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the grace that has given you to be able to give us free, to be able to pay time. Thank God for that. For life that has given you. Thank God for salvation as well. Go ahead and say, Father, I thank you. In all things, yes, I am very grateful. Oh, yes. Lift up your voices, my dear brethren, and say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty Father. I send my thanks to God in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yeah. Let me live a life that will always thank you. Let me always thank you, even as you have taught us today, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and present God. Present your conditions, your matters, your situation to God. Even though it appears as if God is not there, God is saying, I am there. I am the Lord, the Lord of hosts. I am the king, the real king that I, I, I eventually saw. Oh, the real king. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, open my eyes to see you. Open my eyes to see you. God, open the eyes of the servant of Elijah that he will see that those that were with them were much more than those that were against them. God, open our eyes to see that you are with us and you are far ahead and much more than those. That God Almighty. Fill you with us throughout this week. Take us through this week with your almighty hand. Father, fill our hearts and our masters, demons, in the name of Jesus. Fill our lives with victory, so God. Fill us with uh, your grace, almighty Father, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray for someone. Go ahead and pray for somebody. Is there someone who is hurting that you know? Is there someone who is confused that you know? Is that someone? Is there someone who has not accepted Jesus Christ as, as their personal Lord and Savior that you know? Go ahead and pray for that person. Ask that God will clarify things for him or her. Make things clear for him or her. Oh, remove confusion. Remove confusion. Remove fear from this particular person. Oh, God, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray that God will reveal himself to his friends as. And Jesus will, will be acknowledged by these people and the Lord and Savior. Pray, pray for such ones. They might be hurting in one way or another. Ask for the balm of Gilead. Ask for comforting for them. Go ahead and pray. Some, some, for whatever it is that is going on through their heart, or oh, that is causing them to, to be separated from the other people, pray that the Lord will make things clear for them. Pray that the Lord will make things clear for them and, and, and they will cheerfully rejoice with other people. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Pray for that person, pray for that person, pray for that person, pray for those people right now. Pray for those people. It, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Begin to pray for someone else. Pray for someone else. Pray for your sister. Pray for your brother, pray for your parents, pray for your neighbors, pray for your work colleagues. Go ahead and pray. Pray for other people right now. That the gospel of Jesus will touch their hearts and they will be transformed by the love of Christ. They will be transformed by the love of Christ. Blessed be your holy name, Jehovah. Father, even before we call on you, you have had your answer. You are very grateful. Lord, I pray for every 
everyone who appears to be cut off, who thinks that, or who, who, who somehow might, might, might be thinking that you are not with them, that they are alone, that they are that is against them. Father, I pray that you show yourself strong on their behalf. Help them to see that you are around them, you are with them, that you are their comforter. Open their hands to, to see that those that are, are against them are far less than those that are for them. Father, we worship. Release people, Lord God, from, from the prison of depression. Release people, Lord God, from, from the prison of, of self centeredness, selfishness, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Ah, Jehovah Rapha, those that are hurting, those that are unwell in one kind of sickness or the other, I ask that your healing virtues will, will touch them right now, flow through them and heal them. Bring them out of that depressed state, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bring them out of that sickness, oh God. And bring them to health, Almighty Father. Amen. Make them healthy and strong again. Amen. Make them move God to have vitality Amen. and share again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Almighty Father. Thank Go you. with us into this week. Lead us, Holy Ghost of God. Lead us, Heavenly Father. Lead us. Come with us and come behind us and support us, oh God, and, and encourage us, Almighty Father. Shield us from our attacks of the enemy. Amen. Make us too hot for the enemy to handle. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We worship our God in Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Go in love. Go in joy. of the Lord forever and ever.